Palestinians, Israel as a result being branded an apartheid state, Durban 1, Durban 2 intended to investigate honest racism globally. Israel was the one identified as being the apartheid state. What is your response to this? <laughs> Those are a lot of points. Well, I'd start by saying what blockade of Gaza? There are pictures just a few days ago of a new mall, mall. that opened in mm -hmm. Gaza. Uh, there was a long piece in the New York Times about Gaza which pointed out the ennui and boredom that people feel. Not the hunger, but the ennui, that you, there's not enough work and you can't travel easily and so forth. Uh, I'm glad I'm not living in Gaza, but the life in Gaza is not that bad. The problem is that the Israelis don't really have a policy towards Gaza, and nor do the Egyptians. It's just a holding action. Uh, Gaza was not supposed to come under Hamas. It was supposed to be under the PLO, and it was supposed to make uh, peace with Israel and the like. Well, that didn't happen. And even all these years later, no, it was the, the takeover was in 2007, not 2010. Three years later, no one's figured out what to do with it. So that's where I would put the blame. There's no apartheid, there's no blockade, there's no hunger. Uh, there is a, a, uh, a situation which is not going anywhere. And I think there could be some useful changes there. As for apartheid state, you know, this is just flinging insults at Israel. Is it sheer propaganda? It's sheer propaganda, but what fascinates me is that there's some underlying reason for, say, yes. Durban 1. I mean, why, when you bring together people from around the world to discuss racism, why does it end up being a conference about Israel? I mean, tiny Israel, not exactly the place where the world's evils are taking place, and certainly not a racist state. I mean, they brought over tens of thousands of Ethiopians who they've integrated. So if you're just looking at racism, that's clearly not an issue. What What is the reason for this focus on Israel? Not just by Durban. I mean, Durban is an example, but why? I think one third of the United Nations Security Council resolutions concern Israel. Yes. And the mainline churches are f obsessed with Israel, and so forth and so on. I think it's a deep and complex question, but I think there is a sense on the left, and this is a leftist phenomenon. You don't see this among conservatives. This is a sense on the left that there should be an international order defined by the UN Charter on Human Rights, executed by the United Nations and other international institutions, in which the NGOs are the other major operation, and against the nation state. The nation state is the locus of evil. It is internationalism, not nationalism, that is good. Nationalism is bad, internationalism is good. And Israel is a you know, strong nation state that defends its interests and thus is obnoxious to this outlook and is the number one violator in the United States is the number two. And thus you can have the Eurobarometer poll of November 2003 asking Europeans of many countries, what is the most dangerous country in the world? And they say Israel. I mean, it's pretty astonishing. But I think that's what lies behind it, is a sense that Israel is nationalist and nationalism is a danger. And Israel is thus a danger. Yeah, there's a blind belief. And also, I might add, that it only applies to Western states. It doesn't apply to Syria or Iran or uh, China. It applies to Western states. Goodness. We have another article to show you, if you look at it on your screen. It's from the National Post called A Study in Hypocrisy. Turkey is a major player here. And once again, I mentioned earlier on in the program that when that flotilla incident happened, most people did not understand what was going on in Turkey. You've written articles since. In fact, one was published in the National Review, um, in fact, in your, the Middle East Quarterly, back in 2003, talking about how Turkey was actually drifting more and more toward Islamism. But what we saw in the headlines in conjunction with that flotilla incident was that Israel was to blame, that Turkey was the best friend Israel could have in the Middle East, and Israel made the wrong turn and, and upset Turkey. That's what we've been seeing. Now, with this particular article, there was a point that you made here that was published in the National Post. Let's hear what that is. The one about Cyprus? Yes, the one about the hypocrisy. Well, the Turkish leadership, the Islamist leadership in Ankara, has been really going after Israel in recent months. and. It, it wasn't due to anything Israel did. It, it has to do with internal Turkish politics. It is a vehicle, Israel is a vehicle for going after the Turkish military, but 
Never mind. They've been going after Israel and declaring that Gaza is an open air prison and so forth and behind this flotilla. So I said, well, interesting. The Turks are on this high horse of morality. Do the Turks have an occupation? Well, yes, they do. It's called Northern Cyprus. It's been there almost as long. It dates back to 1974. Well, let's take a look at it. And it's not a pretty sight. You have virtually complete ethnic cleansing. There are maybe 300 or 400 Greeks left in Northern Cyprus. D destruction and closing of churches, of course. And Oh, and when the Turkish army entered, it, it used Nepal. And uh, there is an area of one of the cities in the north that uh, is a ghost town that has not been touched since, it has a fence around it since 1974, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, they created a, a, a pretend country there called the Re Turkish Republic of North Cyprus, which no one in the world acknowledges except Turkey, where it has no communications with anywhere except with Turkey. Oh, sounds like an open air prison to me. And by the way, you know, in, in Gaza, it's Hamas, the enemy of Israel, that rules. And in, and in northern Cyprus, it is a, a, a puppet government of the Turkish state. So, you know, isn't this a, instant, a case of the, what's it, the pot calling the kettle black? Isn't this a little strange? Uh, I think the Turks should stop meddling in, in, in Gaza and, and fix things in, in Cyprus, where they've been making a mess of it for 36 years now. Yes. Now, we're going to have to go for a break again, but from what I've been reading, there are many more flotillas being planned to break the Gaza blockade. In other words, a lot of ganging up on Israel. After the break, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Pipes about strategy. How has Israel been faring so far? We're going to go for a break. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. quite in-depth. It was very interesting. Dr. Rachel Turkinich. I don't she interviewed me on that one. That was a very interesting one. Um, you're saying something in there, Kelly? Uh-huh. Six and a half minutes. Thank you.